So in this video, I'm going to talk about the force that acts on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. And I'm going to focus strictly on linear motion, not rotational motion in this video. So the first thing you need to know is what's the direction of the field around a current carrying wire? And that's given to you using the right hand corkscrew rule. So this way of modeling it comes from the idea of opening wine bottles with a corkscrew because you would be turning right to t push the corkscrew into the cork. However, given that most people watching this won't be 18, I think that's a fairly rubbish, or at least I hope that's a fairly rubbish way of explaining it, and you have no idea what they're talking about. So, the better way to think about it is this. Is if you had a wire with the current flowing in the direction shown in the diagram, so the direction of I, and you wrapped your hand around the wire with the thumbs up, just like shown below, with your thumb pointing in the direction of current, and in this case, current is the conventional current. In this field's topic, if you're given current direction, it's talking about conventional current or the flow of positive charges. Electron flow would actually be the opposite way, but that wasn't around, though that theory wasn't around at the time all these magnetic field theories were developed. So all of these are based on the idea of conventional current, and that's what you should assume you're being given unless specified otherwise. Anyway, so conventional current's going upwards, so you point your thumbs up, and that tells you, if you look at the direction of your fingers, they're wrapping around anti-clockwise. So the field would go anti-clockwise around the wire, as shown in the diagram. So that's how to work out the magnetic field around a wire. So the next thing we want to do is work out, well, what direction will the force be in if we put this wire in a magnetic field? Because when you do that, there's the two fields would interact, and so you would get a resultant force. The, the way to do this is using Fleming's left hand rule. So, in Fleming's left hand rule, your thumb represents the direction of the force. Your first finger represents the field. So, first F for first finger, F for field. One's way some people. And then second finger is the conventional current. So some people like to think of that as second finger conventional current, but you just have to remember which finger is which. So if you point your first finger in the direction of the field, and in magnetic fields, field lines go from north to south, and you point your second finger in the direction of the conventional current, your thumb will be pointing in the direction of the force acting on the wire. So that's Fleming's left-hand rule. So Fleming's left-hand rule is all very well and good if the wire is well, the field is perpendicular to the current, that's great. But quite often we can't assume that's the case. So we need a more general rule for it. So you have this rule, F equals BIL cos theta. So I, as you might guess, is the current. B is the magnetic flux density. This is usually given in Tesla or it can be Weber's bit or Weber's per second. Current is obviously given to you in amps. L, as you may suspect, is the length of the wire. And this theta, oh sorry, the length is given in meters. And theta is the angle between normal and field. You might be wondering why we go for the normal, not just the wire, and that is because when it gets to looking at coils, which we'll go on to look at, it's much more useful to look at the normal because the wires are in two directions, if you like, in a coil, whereas the normal would still be in the same direction. So if we draw this on our diagram, 
we draw our normal in roughly 90 degrees. Well, it would be exactly, but I mean, this is a sketch. Then theta would be the angle between normal and the field lines shown there. And because the field lines are going from left to right, that must mean this is a north pole and this is a south pole, because field lines go from north to south. So if you put all of these things into your equation, you can calculate what the resultant force would be acting on the wire. So the question is, why is there a force? So on the right we have a flux diagram, so it's showing where the field lines are when you have a current carrying ductor in the middle of a north and a south pole. As you can see over here on the right hand side, this is quite far away from the wire, so the field lines just go straight from north to south, they're relatively unaffected. And it's the same over here on the left. We have this region which is quite far from the wire, so the field lines are fairly straight. In this middle region here though, when you put the wire in, it's got some field lines around the wire itself, which, and then you can see here the field lines are distorted from the magnets by the wire. So what you end up with is a region of extremely high flux density here and low flux density here. And what that means is just the same way in aircraft there's a force from the high pressure to the lower pressure, there's a force from the low density to the high density, so your force will go that way from right to left. So we can check that based on our laws we have. So if we use the right hand corkscrew rule, you would be pointing your thumb into the diagram. So that means the current is flowing into the diagram. And then if we get our Fleming's left hand rule, the field is going from north to south, so it's going from top to bottom, so your first finger for the field will be pointing downwards, and your current would be pointing into the page, so your second finger will be pointing into the plane of the diagram, and your thumb should be pointing to the left, so that matches up with that nicely there. Okay. So the next thing is, well, what if it's not a current current wire? What if it's just a charge? So say we have a positive charge, and it's traveling at the speed V. and it's entering a magnetic field which is going into the page. So we represent that with the X in the circle symbols. Like this. So we've got the field going into the page of flux density B in Tesla. So what this equation is saying is that the force acting on the charge is equal to the magnetic flux density or the magnetic field strength multiplied by the charge, Q, which would be so this charge would have a charge Q, and that would be measured in coulombs, and then multiplied by its velocity in meters per second squared. This actually comes from the BIL equation, it's just a specialized version of it. And this is, if you look at Fleming's left-hand law, because it's a positive charge flow, like going from left to right, that's the direction of flow of conventional current, because that's the flow of positive charges. So your second finger is pointing to the right. The field lines are going into the page, so your first finger is pointing down into the page. So what you will deduce, better deduce from that is that as it travels through, you will see it bend upwards using Fleming's left hand rule because the resultant force is acting upwards. Now, if it was swapped for a negative charge, what you would see by Fleming's left hand rule, the flow of positive charge would be the opposite way. So your second finger would be pointing to the left if this was traveling to the right. So your second finger would be to the left because it's negative charge first thing is still into the page, so you would see, expect to see it diverge downwards in this case. So there's an application still of Fleming's left-hand rule, and you'll only ever encounter scenarios where their 
field is at 90 degrees for the charge's velocity. But using Fleming's left-hand rule, you can work out the direction of the force. And using this equation up here, you can work out the magnitude of the force by multiplying the flux density by the charge on that charge multiplied by the velocity. So let's have a look at a work example of these questions. So we've got a 30 centimeter long wire carrying a two amp current and it's placed in a magnetic field of field strength 5.0 Tesla at an angle of, oh that should, that's a formatting problem that should say 70 degrees to the field lines. Calculate the force that's in the wire. Let's do a quick sketch. So we've got our north pole here, our south pole here. We've got some field lines going between them, like so. And we've got a wire placed in it. And that tells us it's at 70 degrees to the field lines, like this. So let's have a start to think. First of all, we need to know the angle of the normal to the field lines. So if we drew, draw our normal there, we need to know what theta is. So theta is going to be 90 minus 70, which gives you 20 degrees. So if the field, the wire itself is at 70 degrees, to the field lines, that must mean the normal to the wire, i.e. a line at 90 degrees to the wire, is at 20 degrees for that. We've got L, it tells you in the question, is 0.3, once we convert it into meters. We've got I is 2.0 amps. And we've got B equal to 5.0 tesla. So putting that all together, force is going to be equal to B I L cos theta, which is going to be 5.0 times 2.0 times 0 0.30 actually, because if you think of it in 30 centimeters, so we get the two sig figs there, and multiplied by the cosine of 20, and let's just move that up so we actually have some space to write this. And it gives you a force of 2.0. Newtons to two significant figures. Okay, so that's how you go about doing calculations on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field.